welcome back to the channel. To continue in our end keeping adventure, I wanted to make the step past test tubes. So I started to develop a new nest. Important things for a nest are space, temperature and humidity. Space and temperature are not that hard to control. Humidity is a bit harder. Normally, in a printed nest, you can make this happen in three ways. The first way is with a gypsum inlay, like in this really nice Gen 3 gypsum nest from Wakushi. The gypsum itself absorbs the water and gives it off slowly. But for now, I can't make the gypsum. The next option is sponge. The sponge is normally in an extra room next to the nest. You make some small openings for the humidity to pass through. This is the design I made and printed, but I didn't like the result. The third option is mesh. You make a room under the nest and you create a grid where the humidity comes through. The grid is called mesh. The water is stored in cotton. So. I made this design, one side with mesh and the other side with a preparation for a heat cable. While I was designing this, I had the chance to order a new colony, Camponotus nicobarensis. This type of Camponotus is kept a lot. It's a pretty easy species to keep and they are polygyne, so they can have more than one queen. But I bought a one queen colony with 25 workers and brood. A few days later, the colony arrived. I had prepared a small setup in advance. But when I opened the inside bag, I saw a problem. The cotton that holds back the water was leaking. The tube was partly flooded. I had to take action. I quickly connected the setup. Then I decided to attach the new nest. This was already the second version with a temperature and humidity display. All the standing water had already dripped out when I pulled the end cotton. But the two were still wet. The ants decided to move right away. I thought that the new nest might be a bit too big for them. So later I connected a new water tube. And if they wouldn't like the nest, they would move in right there. And luckily, it might not look like it, but in the end, there was only one casualty. As it was a quick decision to place them in the nest, I hadn't made a cover yet, but some toilet paper did just fine. And there they are, huddled together, but you can see some brood on the left, and the nice orange color on the queen on the right side.
Hey, do you see it in the middle? Even more brood. By then, the lid was ready, and it was time to give them some peace and quiet. Here they are, a few weeks later. They decided to stay in the nest and are doing great. Do you see that there is a cable running under the nest? That is a heat cable. The brood develops a bit faster on a higher temperature. So they place the brood at a spot with the best temperature and humidity. The queen is in the other corner. In the last video about the tic tac box, we had a small find the number quiz. And the winner was Xavio, who happens to be the supplier of this colony, but also our Thermophorax nilandri, known as the Dangleberries. Thank you, Xavio. He decided on the name the ticks. Thank you all for watching. Please consider to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon. See you next time at the Crafting End.